Hi, Room 15. This is Chapter 10, Brutus in Secret of Nim. So after you listen to this, go ahead and go fill out that Google form for both Chapters 9 and 10. Stop where you are, said the rat. How did you get in here? I walked in, said Mrs. Frisbee, keeping her voice calm with an effort. I found a branch with a thorn smoothed off. I pushed it back and... I know, said the rat, rather rudely. And now, walk out again. You aren't allowed in here. He moved a few inches toward her, placing himself between her and the entrance. She noticed how powerful his muscles looked under his glossy coat. He would almost be a match for Dragon. Almost, but not quite. Go on, he repeated. But I have a reason. And I don't care what you have. Go away. You're small. I wouldn't want to hurt you. Are you Justin? Mrs. Frisbee inched back as the rat inched forward. I'm Brutus. Justin's not here. That was reasonably obvious, Mrs. Frisbee thought. The rat named Brutus added, You know Justin? No, said Mrs. Frisbee. That is not exactly. If you don't know him, how do you know his name? Brutus sounded puzzled, and Mrs. Frisbee observed that although he was greatly oversized and muscular, his eyes were bright enough. He looked very young. I was told to me by a friend. Can I see him? Justin? No. He's at a meeting. I'm taking his place. They're all at a meeting but me. Bad luck, thought Mrs. Frisbee. He was a substitute, she thought. Then I'll wait for him. No, said Brutus. You can't stay here. I've got orders. Now go, or I'll have to take you out myself. He moved forward again. My name, said the mouse desperately, is Mrs. Jonathan Frisbee. I want to see Nicodemus. It did not work. I don't care what your name is, and you can't see Nicodemus. That's sure. Brutus now looked both puzzled and annoyed. Move on and be quick about it. All right, said Mrs. Frisbee. You needn't force me. I'll go. She turned slowly and walked back the way that she had come. She felt like crying. After coming all this way, after flying to see the owl, to be turned back so abruptly at the end, she thought as she walked into the darker part of the bush, maybe she could just wait for an hour or so until the meeting, what kind of meeting could it be, was over and then go back, and perhaps the rat named Justin would be at the entrance then. But would Justin pay any more attention to her than Brutus had done? She had a feeling that he would. But when she stopped, she heard footsteps behind her. She looked back and saw that Brutus was following her, so she started again, hurrying to keep out of his sight. After a while, she paused again and listened. This time, there was no sound. He must have gone back to his post. So she sat down on the ground. Then, ahead of her, in the direction of the place where she had entered the bush, she heard a rustle, a faint scraping noise. It was the branch she had pushed to get in. Someone else was moving it. Someone was coming in, walking along the narrow path toward her. It must be another rat. Suddenly, she was terrified. What would he do, meeting her unexpectedly here? She shrank to one side, as close as she could get to the wall of the thorns, hoping that whoever was, whoever it was might go on past, not seeing her. Then he came around the curve, and she saw him. It was her old friend, Mr. Ages, the white mouse. He was moving extremely slowly, and she realized that he was limping badly. One of his legs was injured. It was wrapped up in splints and bandages. Mr. Ages, she called softly. It's Mrs. Frisbee. Who? He peered into the shadow. I can't see you. Mrs. Frisbee. She moved into the middle of the path in front of him. Why, so it is, Mrs. Frisbee. How do you do? He sounded cordial enough, but he was startled. I didn't know that you... How did you happen to get in here? It's a long story, she said. Then tell it to me while I rest. I'm supposed to be at a meeting, but I'm already late, and a few minutes won't matter. As you can see, I had a bad fall and broke my ankle. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope it doesn't hurt. It is mending, but I can walk only slowly and need to rest frequently. He sat down with a sigh. Now tell me what you are doing in the rats's, rose, rats's bush. Mrs. Frisbee, who was wondering the same thing about him, told him briefly as she could about Timothy, Jeremy, the owl, Brutus, and Mr. Ages. And Mr. Ages listened in silence, interrupting only once. You went into the owl's tree? Yes, but I was afraid. I should think so. That takes a lot of courage. I had to do it. When she had finished her story's, mi story, Mr. Ages sat quietly for a minute, considering it. Poor Timothy, he said at last. I should have thought of that myself, but of course, when I gave you the medicine, the weather had not yet turned warm. Then I fell and broke my leg, and I forgot all about it. He stood up. I think, he said, that you should come with me back to the entrance. But I can't. Brutus will still be there. Mrs. Frisbee, having done all that you have done, you are not going to give up now. I'll talk to Brutus. You know him? I have known him since he was born. He's not very old, you know. I think he will do what I ask. From the way that he said this, Mrs. Frisbee could tell he was not nearly thinking it, merely thinking it. He knew it. But how? All right, she said doubtfully. I'll try again, but I don't understand. How do you know, Brutus? We had better move along. They started back toward the entrance at Mr. Age's slow, limping pace. As to how I know Brutus, 
That's a much longer story than yours, and I doubt that I'm one to tell it to you. It is for Nicodemus to say. But I will tell you this. If we go to the entrance, as we will, if, if you are to ask for help, you must promise that you will never tell anything about what you see and hear. I will promise, said Mrs. Frisbee. Again, she thought she had no choice. The owl told me that, too. When they approached the entrance again, Mrs. Frisbee saw that Brutus stood at his post as before, but that another rat joined him. Two of them, she thought. I hope Mr. S Mr. Ages knows both of them. The new rat saw her them coming. He looked alert, dark gray in color, and extraordinarily handsome, though not as so huge as Brutus. Mr. Ages, he said, how's the leg? Better, but it will be a while before I can run again. Justin, said Brutus, staring at Mrs. Frisbee. There she is. That's the one I was telling you about. Is she now? Justin looked at her casually. He did not sound particularly alarmed. Mrs. Frisbee, said Mr. Ages formally, may I present my friends, Justin and Brutus? How do you do? Brutus sounded doubtful. Mrs. Frisbee, said Jonathan, not Mrs. Mrs. Jonathan Frisbee. She is Mrs. Jonathan Frisbee, said Mr. Ages, a widow, as you know. Madame, she, uh, Justin said, bowing politely, it is an honor to meet you. Brutus now looked astonished. You both know her? Who is she? Brutus, said Mr. Ages gently, don't you remember Mr. Jonathan? Brutus wrinkled at his eyebrow. Mr. Jonathan, you mean the one dragon? Yes, said Justin quickly, and this is Mrs. Jonathan. Oh, said Brutus, then to Mrs. Frisbee. Why didn't you tell me? I, would ha I wouldn't have chased you off. Well, said Mrs. Frisbee, I did try, but it doesn't matter. No, said Mr. Ages added, because on the way out she met me coming in. She needs to talk to Nicodemus, and quickly. Brutus looked doubtful again. Nicodemus, but... Can she? I mean, what about the rules? What about the plan? Mr. Aegis said, that has been taken care of. She has promised secrecy, and she is to be trusted completely. That I myself guarantee. After all, consider who she is. As an afterthought, he added, and who her children are. What am I, then? Mrs. Frisbee asked herself in wonder. I suppose that, too, will have to come from Nicodemus. Mr. Aegis said to Justin, what about the meeting? It can't be over already. It was temporarily adjourned, said Justin, to wait for you. In fact, I came here to find you. Justin led the way... Oh, sorry. Then I suppose you had better go in. Justin led the way through the arched entrance with Mrs. Frisbee and Mr. Ages following. Brutus remained at his post. All right, that's the end of chapter 10. So go fill out that Google form.